Finally, we've made it to video five out of the five part series. In this video, we're going to have a look at some other ideas that were suggested by the audience in the investors group. And also we will have a look at the overall conclusions and what unifies all of the different types of investments that were talked about in this series. It's time to learn the day's lesson. And to find out what it is, we turn to the wheel of morality. Okay, finally, we'll have a look at uh, other ways to make money. And these are just some suggestions out there to think about. Uh, you could rent to sublet, but that's almost certainly a breach of contract and probably against the law, so I would be very careful about that. If you own a house, you could rent out a spare bedroom. You could do Airbnb, we all know about these. Uh, you could foster, uh, do some foster care for some very needy children. You could take on a homestay student, usually an international student. Uh, there are some interesting tax implications there with um, uh, the income being non-assessable income. Uh, you could buy a service department or even individual hotel rooms within a hotel chain. Uh, there's also this very interesting aspect of worker accommodation where you can uh, buy or basically you're providing the capital for fly in, fly out mine workers or to house Pacific Islander uh, workers in the PAC Island or worker scheme. Uh, that would have to be around farms uh, up and down, uh, well, within the, the, the farming belt of Australia. You could look at investing in respite care. You could also look at getting into property syndication because a lot of these uh, advanced residential property uh, investments I've been looking at here, well, they require additional capital or specialist knowledge that is far beyond what a regular residential investment would take. So perhaps a trust structure or teaming up with somebody will give you sufficient you know, financial firepower and also the knowledge to actually go ahead and do it. Or you could try timeshare. What you see, timeshare means you buy the condo with about 20 other people like yourselves. You share the condo with other investors and pick the time you want to stay. Share time. Timeshare. So then it's not really ours. Sure it is. One twenty-fourth and a half yours. Finally, let's have a look at the overall lessons here. Well, overall, all of these investments that we've looked at this evening, well, they have higher yield strategies rather than the regular residential properties rented out to families. Capital growth is, you know, it's never not important when you're talking about property, but it's less prominent compared to yield. And higher yield property assets will tend to have a lot more value in the improvements, while high capital growth assets will tend to have a lot more stronger values in the land, as well as points of difference from their neighboring properties. For all of these, generally you'd want to aim at positive gearing, and you'd need to have an investment horizon of about, say, 10 to 20 years. You're not looking to buy or flip these on the short-term market. You'll generally find that bank finance might be a little bit more difficult to get, uh, things like NDIS especially so, and you should expect that uh, you may end up with higher depreciation. Again, this is especially true of NDIS investments. Most of these investments I've talked about here are all self-managed superannuation friendly, um, but all of these opportunities have been created through special subsectors of the market created through regulation. And because of the increased regulation, you could expect more bureaucracy and increased legal fees. But um, yeah, generally higher yields to match that off. Also note that uh, a lot of these properties are going to be restricted in their use or repurpose. So for defense force housing, yeah, you're kind of locked in. Or for NDIS houses, yeah, they're built for a specific purpose and they're not appropriate for a family. So, you know, Again, you're locking yourself into something and that means additional risk for the investor. With all of these, location is important and for different reasons. But I mean, this is generally true of, of property, but it's especially true in these uh, subsectors of the market. As I mentioned also, you might have some substantial difficulty in trying to resell an asset uh, if you need to halfway through your uh, your intended time horizon so just be di just be aware of that and finally you know REITs or syndications might be a good way to get into this uh, this end of the market okay folks I have left some tools here remember that you can download these slides the link is in the description there is also lots of links in the descriptions so just have a look at the description and you can find all the links there 
My name's Philip Wong. I'm a total dork. I don't take myself seriously, although I am actually on YouTube. And if you'd like to find my channel and subscribe, that would be fantastic if you think I've earned it. I do appreciate it very much. You can also reach out to me on LinkedIn, or you just Google search Philip Wong Accounting, and you'll certainly find me. I'm all over the internet. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, this has been the first uh, meetup for the Fire Investors Network. If you'd like to come to future uh, meetings, uh, we are on Meetup. We're also on the Facebook group. And the topic for next month will be on cryptocurrency, facts and myths. And oh boy, are people pumped for that. Yeah, that will be interesting. Folks, thanks very much. Happy investing. You made it to the end of the series. Thank you so much for watching. I do genuinely appreciate it. And I'd really appreciate it if you could help me out by sharing this series with a fellow investor who might be interested in learning more. You can certainly contact me on the internet through either Facebook or LinkedIn. And you know what? Maybe if you'd like to see more, why don't you subscribe or go into the comments and ask me a question or even suggest a uh, topic for future videos because, hey, I know a lot of specialists and if you've got good questions, perhaps we can do an interesting series about something that you've got in mind. Let me know. Thanks very much. Happy investing.